Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be talking all about NVIDIA's upcoming graphics architecture, also known as Pascal. So in this particular video, we're going to be covering a couple of different rumours, which, let's get things straight, they are rumours, they are not confirmations from NVIDIA themselves, although there are a couple of confirmed specs which we will go into. But let's talk about a couple of different things. Memory information. We're going to talk about potential release dates, and we're also going to talk about the fact that there's going to be three SKUs rumoured to be launching, um, which is a bit weird. One of them is going to replace the GTX 970, one will replace the 980, and one will supposedly replace the 980 Ti. But first of all, let's get into some memory information. So, as you're probably aware, because of the delays with HBM2 manufacturing, um, in other words, we're going to see it entering to Q3 and Q4 of this year with higher densities in the fourth quarter. That's basically forced both NVIDIA and AMD to postpone GPUs which are using uh, high quantities of HBM2 until, once again, uh, well, basically late this year slash uh, early next year. So that means that NVIDIA and AMD are left with more traditional memory technologies, which obviously means GDDR5, and a slightly newer technology, and quite exciting, is GDD5, GDDR5X, excuse me, I'm just going to refer to them as R5 and uh, 5X throughout this video, just for abbreviation sake. So, one of the benefits of, R5, of R5X is that you get basically a lot more memory bandwidth per pin and this means that you can reduce the complexity of the PCB and have a narrower bus, for example 256, and still put out a screaming amount of memory bandwidth. With that in mind, there had been a lot of rumours that the 1080, or some people are calling it the X80, the next, the high-end cards from um, NVIDIA, are going to feature 8 gigabytes of GDDR5X, and that looks to be the case. So the rumour has it that the um, the GP104 is actually going to support GDDR5 and also GDDR5X. Now this is actually quite important when we get into the second part of this rumour, which would be the release of three potential SKUs. So what this basically means is, for example, with the GTX 1070, it can just use traditional high-speed uh, GDDR5 memory and that will still provide it a total bandwidth which is adequate you know we're still looking at around the mid 200 range which is more than reasonable on the other hand if they were go with say 12 gigabits per second of GDDR5X they're gonna on once again a 256 bit memory bus be able to squeeze in 384 gigabytes per second by the way this is also an article if you want to check this out um, it's will be, along with the second room that I'm reporting, be linked in the video description. Now these original rooms actually come to us from bitsandchips.it and essentially it's an indication that GP100 as, as a series is going to definitely be a lot faster because to put things into perspective the 980 Ti offers 336 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is quite a lot, I'm sure you'll agree. But this obviously pales in comparison to the 384 gigabytes per second. It's also worth noting that the 980 Ti is essentially using the same core that the Titan does. It's using the GM200, whereas the 980, the regular 980 is using the GM204 core. The 980, for point of comparison, offers 224 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. So when you consider that the potential GTX 1080 could have, let's say, 320 to 384 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, that's a massive jump in performance. Now, further to that, one of the big changes from um, previous generation, which of course was Maxwell to Pascal, is an overall change in how the cores, the processor cores themselves, are put together. Essentially, NVIDIA are deciding to do a lot of changes to the back end. You're going to see major increases in core speed, which obviously means higher clock speeds, which means that per core, you, or core for core, you're going to get bigger, uh, or rather larger performances. We're hearing around 30%. Uh, increases in clock speed which is pretty damn impressive but the other big change is that 
uh, Nvidia also majorly changing how many CUDA cores there are per SM streaming multiprocessor. With Pascal, Nvidia are plopping in 64 CUDA cores per SM, and this is compared to Maxwell's 128. Now you might say to yourself, well, why the hell are they doing that? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. They're putting in fewer cores, but why? Well, actually, in terms of number of cores for the actual system, it's going to be very similar. So, uh, GP104 versus um, GM204. Bloody hell, those acronyms. Uh, they're probably going to have very similar core counts, maybe slightly higher than the um, Pascal side, but the difference is that these SMs will have larger amounts of cache, larger, basically, it's just going to be more efficient overall. And this means, theoretically, we should see the traditional bump in performance. Now, I did mention at the start of this that there is another rumour coming around that NVIDIA are not going to release just two SKUs based on GP104. Just to clarify one more time, and I've said it once, but I just want to get everyone onto the same page. The GP104 is the same core which will be found in the GTX 1080 and the GTX 1070. So, what we understand, however, is there's going to be a third SKU. So, essentially, we're going to see GP104 um, and then there's dash 400, 200, and 150. 400 would replace the 980 tie, the 200 would replace the 980, and then finally the GTX 970 will be replaced with the 150. Now, it's very important to remember that replace does not equal the same performance. We're referring to the pricing range here. So basically, NVIDIA was saying, well, for this price, you're going to get this card. Now, you might say to yourself, well, why are NVIDIA doing that? Well, it's actually quite smart. There was a massive disproportionate pricing difference between the 980 and the 970 when they were first released. Your mileage did vary quite a lot depending upon the vendor, depending upon whether it's super clocked, the cooler, uh, the retailer as well. Um, God knows what. It, there was literally a, lo a lot of different factors, but typically the price range was around $200 difference between the 970 and the 980. That is a lot of money. Um, and one could argue that there wasn't really $200 worth of performance difference between the two cards. It's not to say that the 980 was a bad card. I just want to clarify. It's just NVIDIA had a lot of a lot of gap there, shall we say. A lot of gap in the market. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense for NVIDIA to say, actually, we don't want that. What we want to do instead is to offer our customers another option. And this goes twofold for a strategy. The first is that if AMD are very competitive in pricing, NVIDIA are there to say, actually, we also have some competitive pricing. That's not to say that AMD can't still beat NVIDIA or NVIDIA can't beat AMD. It just offers their customers who are shopping for either um, vendor an option. The second is that if you're already locked into an NVIDIA uh, architecture, for example, let's say once again you've got a high-end G-Sync monitor for sake of argument, then you might say to yourself, well, gee, I'm not really that fussed about upgrading now, but obviously if you've got a card which is a lot of different options, and you can find one that fits your budget exactly. For example, let's say that the card retails at... 350 and that's all you've got then yeah you're probably going to go with the gtx 970 replacement but if you've got a little more let's say you've got the mid 400 dollar range then yeah you can go for the 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 one which is currently going to offer around the same pricing as the gtx 980 and this is going to be pretty important because it's suspected from the rumors we're hearing that the gtx uh, 1070 should offer performance equivalent of over the GTX 980, potentially even up to just before the, the 980 tie, and that makes a lot of sense. It's very similar to what we saw with the with the previous cards from Nvidia. For example, we saw the same with the with the 780 with the 780 ties. You know, it was very kind of like for like, and that's kind of what you expect, right, for a generational bump. Anyway, it's quite interesting. I'm sure you'll agree. And the last thing I want to cover, just to let you know that Pascal is here, dudes. Supposedly, 
there are reports floating about that Nvidia are already sending out press invitations for Pascal. Now, I just want to clarify, these are press invitations. These are not, well, press samples, right? This is literally them just saying that Nvidia are sending out invitations for the press for a presentation to show the card. So what this means is they're basically saying, yeah, we're going to invite you for an event to tell you what our architecture for our cards are about so that then you are ready to review the card whenever that card is released. Which, let's face it, it could be in four weeks time, it could be a little more, we just don't really know at this point. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon, take care, bye for now.